17-year-old Taylor Goodrich died of a treatable condition this past December at a boarding school for troubled teens called Diamond Ranch Academy in Hurricane. Her father is now suing the school for medical neglect. It's just one of hundreds of lawsuits against these types of facilities here in Utah. Fox 13 News reporter Lucy Nelson went to Seattle to speak with her father, Dean Goodridge, in an interview that you will only see here. I never thought I was going to have to worry about burial plots. I mean, she's going to be missed. I mean, there's no... There's no doubt about that. Dean Goodridge says pictures of his daughter could never do justice to the light Taylor brought to those around her. Taylor was in this community. She was everywhere. There's not somewhere or somebody that she touched in this tribe. The 17 year old's death in December of 2022 at Diamond Ranch Academy, a boarding school in Hurricane, Utah, leaves a lasting imprint on her entire Native American tribe, the Stillaguamish tribe in Washington. She had the biggest heart. She would do anything for anybody. If somebody was down, she would try to do whatever she could to cheer that person up. She was well loved. The first girl of 11 tight knit siblings who loved Disney and her rescue dog named Sushi. It's not just, oh, you, ch you lost your child. Yeah, I lost my child. Two nieces that never could see their aunt. Grandparents never could see their granddaughter again. Brothers, sisters never get to see her again. As a young teenage girl, Taylor had some emotional problems. Dean says a counselor who used to work for the tribe picked Diamond Ranch as a place for Taylor to go and get help. She got Taylor to agree to go to it. What parent is there to say, hey, when your, their daughter or child goes, Dad, I need help, I think this will help. I'm not going to tell her no. She wanted to get help, not end up in a box. Autopsy reports reveal Taylor died of sepsis, a stomach condition which, with treatment, is preventable. If they would have took her to the doctor or the ER, she'd still be here. I'd still have my daughter. Medical reports show Taylor was throwing up for weeks at the school and complaining of severe pain. They put her through so much punishment and pain and agony. My daughter died alone, not with one family member by her. Taylor's case is not new to the industry, not even to Diamond Ranch Academy. She's the third student to die there since it opened in 1999. Unfortunately, like for me, this is the first time I've had to deal with this. Probably won't be the last, depending on how long I stay here. That's the voice of the Night Watch director at the school, recorded by Matthew Thomas, who worked at Diamond Ranch for five months. I'm a very suspicious person when it comes to things, so I set my phone to audio record for the for the meeting. Or, the amount of meeting that I was actually in there for before I was removed. After the director briefed them on Taylor's death, Matthew raises a question. I'm, I'm not really, I'm a little concerned she got sick and passed away when she was sick with, because like all these kids are getting sick and we're sitting here around all them. Like, does she have any kind of pre-existing conditions that? It's muffled, but the director is heard saying she was up and better. Well, she seemed like she was doing better, her vitals. I mean, then Matthew interjects. I know what the email said. Because I, I wouldn't like I heard about it this morning. I went back and I looked through emails too because I heard about it like a week ago from Carrie because she said that there was a student sick. And I just I feel like there's a lot more to neglect at play than is what's being led to believe. That day, December 21st, one day after Taylor's death, was Matthew's last day at Diamond Ranch Academy. After the meeting, I quickly downloaded as much stuff as I could off my email because I was actually blocked from my email the next day and I was fired on December 26th, the day after Christmas. One of the emails he downloaded says Taylor, quote, expressed to be angry and felt like staff weren't trying to help her with being sick lately. Another text from a staff member who wanted to remain anonymous was sent three days before Taylor died, reading in part, honestly, if she was my kid, I would take her to the hospital or at least an Instacare. I mean, there's the overall feeling from almost all the kids that they all feel neglected. They, this, they don't believe in the program of the school. Matthew says he doesn't think the school helps the kids at all. They instill into these kids' minds that their parents aren't going to take them back. This is their last straw. So if they leave Diamond Ranch Academy, they're on their own. And so it scares them into submission. Anytime anyone gets sick or has an injury requiring individualized care, they often will label them as dramatic, manipulative, 
liars, or lazy, and it gives them excuses to ignore their needs. Meg Applegate knows what it's like living on the inside of these facilities. I first entered this industry when I was 15 years old, uh, when I was kidnapped from my bed in the middle of the night. I was then forced to travel to a lockdown facility in Boise, where I spent the next six months. After she was transferred to a therapeutic boarding school in Montana, she experienced a group therapy tactic called the circle, where other kids were forced to scream at a single student in the hot seat. We would hear every personal fear, everything that you're self-conscious about, the kind of learned helplessness that's, that sprouts from that is so damaging. For Meg, Taylor's case hits close to home. It hit a lot of survivors because anyone could have been Taylor. Any one of us could have been her because we were really forced to stay silent about anything that we were going through. She's using her voice now as an advocate for survivors through a grassroots organization called Unsilenced. Another way we really uh, try to impact change is heavily focusing on forcing transparency into the troubled teen industry. And we do that by way of our online program archive, which now has over 100,000 documents and information on over 3,500 different programs. Now added to that archive, a lawsuit filed by Dean Goodridge on behalf of his daughter against Diamond Ranch Academy. I don't want to see any child, though, any, to go through this. And I feel sorry for everyone that has gone that went to DRA before any of these other facilities before this. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a facility or program that classifies as part of this industry that doesn't have at least one allegation of abuse, neglect, or worse. In my mind every day, I'm like, I'm terrified of any child that's there. That's why Utah State Senator Mike McKell got involved. Uh, this is an industry that uh, thrived on controlling kids for decades. Sure, we had some oversight, but it was very, very limited. In 2021, he passed Senate Bill 127 with unanimous support. What what happened with Taylor Goodridge is an example of where, you know, we had a law in place, the law was violated. I, I'm very concerned about that. The bill, among other things, adds new investigators, bans pain restraints, and mandates weekly phone calls with families. The week before she died, Dean and Taylor were scheduled to get on a call but Taylor never got on. The reason why the parent coordinator was there because Taylor got in trouble. She got in trouble for laying in the bed below her because she wasn't so sick she couldn't get up into the top bunk. This is, this is an industry that needs to be updated. I'm not comfortable with where we're at right now. But no law, no legislation, nothing can bring Dean's daughter back to life. For a while, I thought she was just gonna, this was a nightmare, I was gonna wake up she was going to walk through the front door. I've came to realize that it's never going to happen. The Department of Health and Human Services did place Diamond Ranch Academy on a conditional status, but as of March 17th, they have allowed the school to accept new students. I reached out to Diamond Ranch's legal team several times over the past week, but did not get a response. As you heard, Senator McKell has plans to further increase oversight and monitor the rights of minors in our state. We'll continue to track any new developments. In studio, Lucy Nelson, Fox 13 News, Utah.